Hi folks, HR Funk here. I think we can all agree that over the course of the last couple of decades, one of the fastest, if not the fastest growing areas in the firearms world has been with small, easily concealable handguns. As more and more citizens have begun exercising their right to self-defense by carrying concealed handguns, the industry has responded and there are now many, many options to choose from. One of them is the pistol that I have here with me today. This is a Smith & Wesson Model 380 Bodyguard. And this is a slightly older version of this pistol. Nowadays, Smith & Wesson has brought the 380 Bodyguard under the M&P line. But as best I can tell, there are really very few, if any, differences between this one and the ones that are being manufactured currently. So in this video, we're going to take a close look at the 380 Bodyguard. I'll let you know what I think of it. And eventually, we'll get out to the range and see how it shoots. And here is an up-close look at the Smith & Wesson 380 Bodyguard. And as the nomenclature clearly indicates, it is chambered for the 380 ACP cartridge. And while some might scoff at the 380 for defensive use, I can tell you that I've known of more than one person who's met an untimely demise as a result of a bullet being launched from that diminutive cartridge. So I guarantee you it can be quite lethal. Dimensionally, the 380 Bodyguard is about five and a quarter inches in overall length. It is just shy of four and a quarter inches in height, and it weighs 12.3 ounces. The barrel length is two and three quarter inches, and this does have both a stainless steel barrel and slide, and both of them are treated with a black armor knight finish. The Bodyguard 380 comes with two stainless steel six round magazines. So finally, we're seeing a manufacturer that's including more than just one magazine with their handgun. Three would be nice, but two is certainly better than one. So you do get two magazines with your 380 Bodyguard. Beginning our top-down look at the 380 Bodyguard, we can see that it has drift-adjustable front and rear sights that are both dovetailed into the slide. It also has a loaded chamber cutout. I hate to call this a loaded chamber indicator. I've talked about these before. If you have really good light, and you can see the cartridge case rim down in there, then this more or less works, but in any kind of adverse lighting conditions, this is basically useless. So this is something I would like to see Smith & Wesson move away from, but they use this for a lot of their firearms, and it seems like it's pretty well ingrained in their designs these days, but I just think that could be improved upon. As with most Smith & Wesson pistols manufactured these days, the 380 Bodyguard has a Heavy-duty extractor, so I would not expect broken extractors with these pistols. Interestingly, unlike a lot of 380 designs on the market today, the 380 Bodyguard is not a straight blowback system. This is not a fixed barrel. If you watch closely, you'll see that the barrel is locked with the slide for a short distance, and then it unlocks, and the slide continues to move backwards to facilitate extraction and ejection of the spent cartridge. And when it moves forward, the barrel locks back into place. So this is a locked breech, short recoil operated system in the 380 Bodyguard. As you can see, the 380 Bodyguard has a polymer frame. So that's going to make it very low maintenance. And when we turn to this side, we can also see there are several controls here at the top of the frame. We have a safety at the rear. And I've got to tell you, with the trigger system that this pistol has, I am not a big fan of the safety. This is one of those things that I always worry is going to be on when you don't want it to be on and you're gonna to have to fiddle around to figure out why your pistol's not firing when you really need it. Now I know there are some folks out there who absolutely positively do want a safety on their handgun. So for those folks, Smith & Wesson has accommodated them. Personally, I would prefer not to have this. The pistol also has a slide stop and again, unlike some designs, this has a last round slide hold open feature. So when the last round is fired from the magazine, the slide does lock open to indicate that was the last round that you had to fire. So that's another nice touch. And that works very easily. I don't have a big problem. There's just enough there to get your thumb on to work the slide stop or slide release as the case may be. The magazine release, as you can see right here, is very small. I would not expect this to be inadvertently activated, which is good, but it's also not particularly easy to find with your thumb when you're trying to intentionally release the magazine. Now, the good thing is I don't see this pistol as being something that you're going to be 
firing mag dump after mag dump and dropping the magazine as quickly as you can and reloading and continuing to fire. This is going to be something with six shots, actually six rounds in the magazine and one in the chamber to get you out of a bad situation and you're going to remove yourself as quickly as possible, not necessarily worrying about reloading and continuing to fire or being in a protracted firefight or anything like that. So I don't necessarily see that magazine release as a problem. The trigger system is double action only, which gives it second strike capability, but it's also certainly not a target grade trigger. Again, I don't see that as a big problem for the intended use of this pistol. This is not a target pistol. This is not something you're going to be doing bullseye shooting with or anything else. So that double action only trigger should be fine. That's sort of my same thoughts with the sights too. These are not tremendously good sights. I'll see if I can get you a sight picture there. But at the distances this pistol is intended to be used at, I don't expect there's going to be a lot of sight usage anyway. Speaking of the sights, this pistol is equipped with a laser that you can see right there. And this is activated by a button on either side of the frame that we see here. And if you push it a second time, you get a flashing laser and the third time turns it off. This is an option with the M&P bodyguards that are being built these days. And it's something that has been retained from the design. I think this was included from the very first bodyguards when the design was brand new. And one more point about the laser, it is adjustable. There is a windage and elevation adjustment on the sides of the frame here. It takes a very small Allen wrench to adjust this, but you can dial it in so that it is proper point of aim, point of impact for your pistol and your ammunition. Something you might have picked up on just by watching me handle this pistol is that the grip frame is very short. You can get two fingers on there, and it's interesting because on the description of this pistol on the Smith & Wesson website, it mentions the finger extension on the magazine, which it does have, but that really just gets your second finger on there. Your little finger is still not going to fit on there if you have hands that are my size, which are medium large hands. I don't have extremely large hands, but I would say medium large. Um, if you have very small hands, maybe you'll get that little finger on there, but I think most people are not going to be able to do that. So if that's a concern for you, just be aware that that's something you're going to have to deal with with the grip frame on this pistol. There is no provision for an interchangeable back strap on this pistol, which again, I don't see as a big problem. This is something that you're going to have in a pocket or a concealed holster, or maybe someone's going to have it in a purse or a briefcase or what have you. And it's not something that you're going to be spending a lot of time fitting to your hand or anything else. This is a deep cover emergency firearm that you're just going to grab. And as I said before, use it to get yourself out of a bad situation. I'm not going to demonstrate disassembly of this pistol because if I do, in all likelihood, YouTube will restrict this video. <laughs> they may well do so anyway. But what I will tell you is disassembly of this pistol is a little bit of a pain. You have to rotate the takedown lever down and then take it completely out of the pistol while you've got the slide lock to the rear. And I did manage to pinch my hand a little while ago trying to do that. So it's not exactly as easy as the full-size M&Ps or some other pistols out there. It's doable, but it's not tremendously easy. So in the end, I would say the 380 Bodyguard is purpose-built to be exactly what it is, which is a very small, easily concealable, lightweight handgun that is not at all a target pistol. It is not a range pistol. It is simply something that you're likely to have with you if you come across a situation where you're dealing with an imminent lethal threat and you can use this pistol to try to get yourself out of that situation and avoid that lethal threat. And that's going to do it for the shop review of the 380 Bodyguard. Now let's head out to the range and see how it shoots. Folks, because of the size and intended use of the 380 Bodyguard pistol, I am not going to be shooting it through my standard handgun testing battery. Rather, what I'm going to be doing is essentially function firing it with some 95 grain blazer ball ammunition. I've also got some 99 grain Federal HST hollow point ammunition. And I'm gonna be shooting it a little bit with the laser so we can look at the point of impact with that. And when I get all done, we'll take a look at the target and see how it did. So first up is the 95 grain blazer brass ball ammo, which is kind of hard to say. All this shooting is gonna be from a distance of 15 feet. Let's see how it goes.
Well, my original intent was to fire that last magazine of ammunition using the laser, but as it turns out, it's too bright out here for me to be able to see the laser dot. So instead, I loaded up another full magazine plus one in the chamber of the 95 grain blazer brass ball ammo and decided to try to shoot the gun out of my bad guy's hand. So let's take a look and see how the pistol shot. So there we go, folks. With that first seven shots of the 95 grain blazer ball ammo that I fired, those are all right here. I pulled two shots a little bit low. That's not really a concern to me with this type of a firearm. And I think that's decent defensive accuracy from this distance of 15 feet. These are the next seven shots that I fired up here with the 99 grain Federal HST. And I think those are definitely good enough to cause any bad guy to rethink his career choice. And the final shots, as I said, I fired trying to shoot the pistol out of his hand. And of those seven shots, I've got one, two, three, four, five shots that are on the pistol. One that hit his thumb and one that's just off right there. Again, for this type of a firearm from that distance of 15 feet, I think that is fine defensive accuracy. And I've got just a few rounds left, so I'm going to fire those out on the steel target, and then we'll wrap things up. And there you go, folks. Perfect functioning. This was certainly not an exhaustive test as far as as much ammo as I shot, but the pistol functioned flawlessly with two different types of ammo. It is adequately accurate and it is perfectly capable to fulfill its intended mission. So there you go, folks. That's my review of the Smith & Wesson Model 380 Bodyguard. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, as always, make sure you forward those to me. Remember, if you purchase anything from Optics Planet, be sure to use my discount code, which is... And if you use that discount code, it's good for 5% off anything you purchase from Optics Planet. Also remember, Hot Munitions has a discount code for the channel these days. If you go to Hot Munitions and use my discount code there, which is HRFUNK10, that'll save you 10% off your purchase from Hot Munitions. See you next time, folks. And until then, good shooting. Bye-bye.